Thank you for watching videos by Jeff Sibelius and LandonAirPhotos.com. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to add transitions to your drone video or any video with CyberLink PowerDirector 16. In previous episodes, I gave you a tour of PowerDirector 16 and showed you how to import, trim, and cut your media clips. If you haven't watched those, please click the link in the upper right corner of this video. You will get the most out of these first five tutorials in this series if you watch them in order. Have you watched those? Great. Now you're ready to move on to episode three, adding transitions. Let's open up the project we've had throughout this series. Here is where we left things at the end of episode 2. Give me a minute. I'm going to drag this last video clip back up to the first row and make a few splits so I can demonstrate transitions. Now we're ready. Transitions refer to how the change from one media clip to another is displayed. PowerDirector comes with dozens of transitions, but most people stick with one or two. By default, when your video moves from one clip to the next, it simply switches to or jumps to the next clip, like this. This is referred to as a jump cut. I'm going to interrupt myself with a note for people recording with drones, GoPros, or many other types of cameras. The file system used to format your media card has a maximum file size limitation, probably about 4 gigabytes. When your recording reaches that size, your drone or GoPro will save what has been recorded up to that point and automatically start another file. This is why a 15 minute flight you recorded with your Mavic Pro or Unique is stored as three files on the media card rather than just one which is how you recorded it. Not to worry, if you bring those three video files into PowerDirector and drop them on your timeline right next to each other, you can output a video that will show the entire flight and you won't be able to see any seams between the first and second clip or the second and third. Same holds true for GoPro footage, most action cameras, the majority of cameras you use for digital video. I just wanted to make that clear because it's a question that every new drone pilot or GoPro owner raises. Now, back to the tutorial. Your edited and completed drone videos could be created using nothing more than jump cuts, and that takes no effort. It happens automatically when you put two media clips side by side. The other commonly used transition is called a fade. This is where the first clip fades out as the second clip fades in like this. As you can see, for a period of time, both videos are displayed as it transitions from one clip to the next. You have many other transitions that you can use. Where a clip pushes another clip out of the way. Or the screen wipes one clip off to display another. Or, well, all kinds of other options. They can get pretty obnoxious. I'll show you two methods to create a fade transition. The second method I'll demonstrate is what you should use to add any of those other types of transitions to your video. The first method to produce a fade is to simply drag one video clip so it overlaps another clip on the same row. Notice that as you drag the clip, a pop-up box shows information like start and end times and duration, and at the bottom of this pop-up box is how long the overlap duration is. When you get the clip positioned where you want it, let go of the clip and ask what you want to do. Your last choice is crossfade. Choose that and you've got a fade that will last as long as your overlap duration. And it looks like this. If you want the fade to last longer, just grab the second clip and drag it so that it overlaps more of the first clip. Now it's a longer fade.
Let me undo that transition. Now I'll show you the second method to create a fade, and this technique works for the other kinds of transitions as well. Put two media clips up against each other as you would for a jump cut. Now click on the icon in the media library for the transition room. You can see that you have lots of choices broken into categories. Click the General category and you'll find several options, including Fade. Click and hold on Fade Transition, drag it down and drop it on the point where your two clips meet. Let go and now you can see the transition has been added. It looks like this. There are other uses for the fade. Want to fade out the end of your video to black? Go to the end of your last clip. Drag the fade to the end of the last clip and drop it. And the last clip will transition to a black screen. If you want the fade out to go on longer, click on the last clip. Then click on the little transition area of that clip, then drag the transition in. Now it will take longer to transition to black, like this. Same for adding a fade in from black. Go to the beginning of the first clip, and drag in a fade and now you see a nice fade in to start your show. As I said before, this is how you add the other types of transitions to your video. You select the transition you want from the transitions room, drag it down and drop it on the point where two media clips meet. PowerDirector 16 has more than 100 transitions you can try out. Most people stick with fades and jump cuts, but if you like the other transitions, use them to your heart's content. It's your masterpiece. I'm going to Control S to save my project so it's ready for the next episode. That concludes Episode 3 of Editing with PowerDirector 16. In the next episode, I'll show you how to add titles and background music to your video. Thanks for watching. Remember, sharing is caring. If you would share this video on social media, I would really appreciate your help. On screen, you'll find a link to the complete playlist of PowerDirector 16 video editing tutorials, so please check them out. If you want more tutorials, let me know in the comments below. Before you go, be sure to hit the like button. Also, subscribe to this channel so you know when more videos are released. Next video coming soon.